Well, now we're going down to Florida, and our cowboy cook, Ron, has got some gourmet cooking for us. Mm, I can't wait. We have got a great show for you today. We're going to be cooking up some fantastic Swiss steak for y'all. And wait a second, I just think I heard somebody out there say, Swiss steak, what's Swiss steak? Well, if you don't know what Swiss steak is, or if you've never had this before, you've got to stay tuned because this is a fantastic recipe. And we're going to start heating up the kitchen right now on the Check Wagon Cowboy. Come on! Jeff Ron Locke here, and welcome to the Chuck Wagon Cowboys. So glad you can make it with us today. On today's episode, we're talking Swiss steak. Now, for those of you who've had Swiss steak before, you know how great of a meal this is. And y'all got to check this out. Check it out the way the Cowboys going to be doing it today, because I've laid down some ingredients that most of the recipes that I've seen for Swiss steak have not had in it before. So, I yeah, think you're going to enjoy this. Stick around and check this episode out. For those of you who haven't had Swiss steak before, and yeah, I can see a header or two nodding, yeah, this is a fantastic meal. You've got to check this out. I think you're really going to like this. You're going to want to try this when you see the end result. So, I hope you enjoy the show, all right? Well, enough about me yakking. Let's get on with the ingredients. Now, before I start, we're going to do this in four stages because this recipe is done in stages. So instead of laying all the ingredients out, I'm just going to give them to you as we do each stage, all right? So without further ado, let's get on with this. I have here three pounds of cut up round steak. Now you can buy this two different ways. You can buy this as just a flat round steak and do the cutting up yourself, or you can go ahead and buy the cut up version. Now I, I prefer the cut up version if I can get it. Um, if not, I'll, of course, buy the steak and cut it up myself. It's about 15 minutes to do. Not that bad. But if you want to save a little time, you know, spend a few more pennies, go ahead and buy the cut up version, all right? And what you want to do then is just go ahead and get a meat tenderizer and just pound it out a little bit. And you just want to pound this down and get it a little thin, all right? Because you want to go ahead and get this as tender as possible for your recipe, all right? So that's what we got here, all right? Now that's been also washed and pat it dry before we put this in the bowl, just to let you know that too. I always want to just wash your meats and stuff, just to make sure you get all the contaminants and everything off that may be from either the processing plants or from the stores itself, whatever. You just never know. It's always a good idea to do that. All right. Next here, we've got ourselves a mixture of a quarter teaspoon of pepper and a half teaspoon of salt. And that's all. We just mix that together. And to add to our coating that we're going to be putting on the meat we have here one half cup of flour all right it's as simple and get our ingredients ready for our coating that's going to be going on our round steak and then that's going to be getting ready to go into the frying pan for a bit but anyway let's go ahead and start what you're going to want to do first of all is get yourself a freezer bag a zipper freezer bag now y'all can do this a couple different ways you can take your ingredients mix it up in like a shallow dish and dredge your meat into that which is I've done many times, but I've gotten a more simpler way by just taking one of these bags. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take our ingredients here. Cameron, you getting that? All right. Just do that. Pour your ingredients in. Get your bag here. Like so. Now, you can get your kids involved with this as well. Give you a little aerobic activity if you want. I remember my mama, this is one of the ways she used to do it. Kind of a shake and, shake and bake type of thing. And you go ahead and get your bag zipped here, like so. Make sure it's zipped, because <laughs> sometimes if you don't, it'll fly all over the place. And all you want to do then, I just grab it like this, and hopefully stay close. We're just going to go ahead and take a couple pieces of meat. I use about maybe two or three pieces at a time, like so. Uh, there we go. Take about three pieces like that, set that back in there. And then just going to go ahead and zip this up. I'll go ahead and just make sure and just shake it like that. For about five seconds and we have breaded our round steak here. And now we're going to go ahead and start frying it up. Now what you want to do is get a couple tablespoons of either canola or peanut oil. Put that in your uh, hot skillet here. we got a large skillet here because we've got three pounds. That's quite a bit. And then what you're going to want to do, simply go ahead and get yourself your meat bombs. Make sure you either get a new pair or they're thoroughly washed. And we're just going to go ahead and start placing our pieces of meat into 
our skillet here. And it'll take a couple minutes to start heating up here. We're just getting things going. And that's all you do. Just like I said, just put it in there, get it on about medium, a little bit higher than medium heat, and just uh, get about two to three minutes on each side until it's nicely brown, flip it over, and then go ahead and do the other uh, two to three minutes on each side. Just make sure it's all right. Here we are. We have got our brown round steak in our casserole dish. Now you want to first go ahead and get yourself a 9 by 13 lightly greased casserole dish. Lay it out. Once your meat's brown, go ahead and layer it all out into your casserole dish like we have here. Just save a little time. All right. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is introduce our next set of ingredients for you. And then we're going to go ahead and finalize this before it goes into our oven. Now at this point, go ahead and preheat your oven to 325 degrees. Okay. And what we're going to do now, we've got here one medium onion that's been sliced up. And we're just going to go take our tongs here. And you can just go ahead and place these all around on top of your meat and just kind of give it a good re representation here all right like I'm doing and if these little rings come apart that's all right too they're going to come apart in the cooking process anyway so which is a good thing here all right these little stubborn buggers here don't want to come out there we go uh, <laughs> sometimes you got to play around with this food a little bit all right like that you know just kind of move them around a little bit just like I said get a good representation of everything like so there that works that works all right now I'm gonna go ahead here I'm gonna go ahead here and wash my hands real quick because the next step involves layering some mushrooms all right sorry about stepping out of camera there for a second folks now again hand washing it's important you keep your hands clean at all times especially if you're going to be using your hands for food because you don't want to cross contaminate you're touching things and different things in the kitchen you want to keep it clean, all right? Obviously, you don't want to kill anybody with bacteria or anything. So make sure, as, as a good chef, cook knows, keep your hands clean, especially, especially if you're going to be using them for any part of your cooking at all. So we've got here our mushrooms. And all I'm going to do here is just layer these in. Now, this is about a cup to two cups of sliced fresh mushrooms. Uh, you can use the can kind if you want, if you want to save a little time. I'm telling you what, though, for the extra 10, 15 minutes it is to slice these up, and actually, the grocery store has a section where you can buy them sliced up for a few pennies more. It just really adds to the whole flavor of this. You can see already, this is going to be fantastic. Uh, if you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to add them. That's fine. My recipe calls for them because I am a big, big mushroom fan, if you haven't figured that out already. And, uh, you know, just keep layering as much as you want. I like a lot of mushrooms. And so I'm going to cover this quite liberally here. And uh, that looks good. Yeah, I think we're going to use all these. So that's what we're doing here. All right. Like so. Just like Well, all right. Now, we're going to go ahead and introduce these ingredients to you. And this is going to be what goes on top of our Swiss steak. All right. So we've got here, first of all, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. And I use a four cup measuring cup here because it's a lot easier to pour. It's got the nice little spout there. I could do this in a bowl, but it's just a little more messier without having this nice spout to pour on top of it. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second, all right? So we got our two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. All right, we've got here one cup of red wine. Now, I use a Cabernet Sauvignon, and it is fantastic. I like a head heady wine for this particular recipe because it just gives it a much more heartier flavor. You can use any kind of red wine, but that's the kind I prefer to use. All right? And lastly, we've got one cup of just plain water. All right, like that. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to go ahead and get ourselves a little teaspoon here, mix this all up, like so. Put this back in the sink. All right. Now, all you're going to do is simply just pour this mixture all on top of your Swiss steak, like so. This isn't really a casserole, even though we're using a casserole dish. Say it's a bacon dish. But uh, I've had people tell them, ask me, it's like, was that a casserole or what? It's, it's a Swiss steak bake is really what it is. All right. So there you go. That's it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cover this, and we're going to go ahead and put this into our 325-degree oven for two and a half hours. Now, we're slow tenderizer to it. The ingredients, the onions are fantastic. The mushrooms add a certain savory flavor to this. This gravy we put on top of this, 
I'm telling you, it's worth the effort. It's worth the five minute effort to make that gravy. It just really pops this whole Try this out. All right. All right. Well, from the Chuck Wagon Cowboy Show, this is Ron Locke saying, yeah, that's right. Good eating and happy trails. Now, wasn't that yummy? Well, now we're going to take a short little break and we'll be right back.